Well, the main issue that we were looking at is how are tenure reforms implemented? What are some of the constraints or enablers of forest reform implementation, especially at the government agency level? But we were also interested to know to what extent does this affect the tenure security of resource users of forest adjacent communities, both men and women. We took the characteristics of their households, their ethnicity, the religion. We asked them about the products that they get out of the forest, but also about their main livelihood activities. We also asked them questions around tenure security and insecurity. We wanted to know what is tenure security to them? We involved the, uh, the, uh, the key government agencies, the non-state non actors, customary leaders, religious leaders, communities, uh, uh, people from the education sector, or, you know, everybody. And we called them a, key, uh, a team of experts who had knowledge on land tenure and forest tenure issues. In Uganda, Forestry has always concentrated in the, in the biological sciences. Social forestry or community forestry, in my view, uh, it has been a new term. But it basically looks at involving communities in the tree planting for the benefits derived from forests. So previously, we've had a lot of plantation forestry, mainly done by government and big companies. But with social forestry or community forest in place, We've had communities having their community forests managed together on their communal land in some places for the benefit of providing the products and services they need. But these social forests and practitioners need the support from the technocrats. The problem has been lack of trust. For me, that is all political. I think the political factor was, I, I found was the major, major issue that was affecting the implementation of these reforms. All of these reforms, of course, were guiding stars and pointers to us, that whereas we've really spent time studying the ecology okay, of the forests, we needed to give equal attention to the communities, their livelihoods, their entitlements, their access, you know, their you know? So, again, we brought in a new wave. Issues of participatory forest management, issues of uh, social forestry, issues of collaborative forest management, issues of community-based management reforms. All of these were well intended. They were in tune with the times. But what about the communities? What about the ladies, the women, the youth that were adjacent to these forests? Was their livelihood secure? Was their tenure secure? If somebody is sure that their tenure or the right to access and manage and own is clear, then they'll be looking at this resource of forestry in the long term. And when they look at this in the long term, then it uh, helps them to conserve it. And when they do conserve it, uh, down the line, we shall have the benefits of the ecological function of this forest. Those forests are characteristic with uh, fruits, they are characteristic as habitats of uh, you know, small edible animals. They are characteristic of uh, sources of uh, fuel wood. So the linkage between food security, uh, forest management, and security of tenure is quite clear. There has to be a greater prioritization of tenure reform implementation in the ministry's activities and budgets. Second, the capacity of implementing officials must be strengthened. And third, the process of registration for collective rights has to be streamlined and simplified. <laughs>